Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you doing? Matt Antonelli here with Antonelli Softball. Today we're talking about some outfield drills. Um, so this drill right here, we've got a coach. I'll kind of play it for you here. we got a coach right here. Um, it's an indoor practice, but you can do this outdoors or indoors. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to have an outfielder get squared up in a ready position facing uh, the player or the coach that's tossing the ball. You're going to work. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. Right now, they're working on balls kind of hit straight over their head. You can also work on different angles. You can really work on every angle possible. Um, so for balls that are hit right over your head, a uh, couple key things to, to, to keep in mind. First is you want to really be able to pivot and open your hips up quickly. So the quickest way for me to do that is to pivot right here. So both feet are are basically going to get off the ground pretty much at the same time, and you're just going to spin, open your hips, boom, get to this point right here. Now, once you get here, you've cleared your hips, so you can now cross over and run. That's one of the biggest things is to be able to open up so that you can sprint. Okay, what I see happen a lot is players don't get fully open. They only go to about right here, and then they, they don't sprint, but they kind of run sideways where they're crossing over with their right leg, but they're never s turned fully this way. So she does a really, really good job of she is literally sprinting, pumping both arms and sprinting while just turning her head. That's key. Don't turn your entire body. You'll really, really slow down. The really good outfielders are able to turn their entire body and just keep their eyes and head turned on the ball, but literally they are sprinting this way. So she does a really, really good job of that. A couple other things to keep in mind. You don't want to put your glove out too early. So the other key thing that I see players mess up with is instead of pumping both arms like this, what they do is they pump their non-glove arm and they get their glove arm up ready to make the catch even though they're nowhere close to the ball yet. And so what she does a pretty good job of here is she uses both arms, she pumps both arms. You want to act like you don't even have a glove and that you're literally just sprinting. And then as you get close to the ball, you're going to flash your glove and make the catch. Now this ball right here, she kind of beats the ball back there, and so now she gets behind it. But if it was a ball that she didn't beat, then it's really, really key to continue to pump, pump both arms and then flash your glove, make the catch. Now on balls that you can get behind... You want to try to get behind the ball. So what she does right here is she's sprinting. She's behind the ball. Once she realizes that she's behind the ball, now she's going to collect herself and then move back towards the base. All right, so there's going to be balls that, that we can't get behind. So it's important as a coach to kind of mix it up. Mix up balls that the outfielder can get behind and then get their momentum going back towards home plate or whatever base they're throwing to. And then also mix up some balls where they're going to have to continue to run and make a running catch because obviously you're going to have to make both in a game. But on this, when you can get behind the ball, it's important get behind the ball, get your momentum going back towards the base that you're throwing. And it's, it's, it's a good habit to get into um, with runners on base. Because you don't want to take for granted that a runner isn't going to tag up, right? You never know when they're going to tag up. And you don't want to give them a free base because you catch the ball here. You kind of drift this way. And whether it's a runner tagging from first to second, second to third, or, you know, third to home, we don't want to take it for granted. Now, usually when there's a runner on third base, you don't take that for granted. But there's times where there's a runner on first base. Uh, or second base, and they end up tagging up when maybe you don't think that it's a deep fly ball or you don't expect them or anticipate them to tag up. But because you do a poor job of kind of getting behind the ball, you kind of catch it and drift, they're able to tag up on you. So um, simple drill, but important to really focus on the mechanics of the drill and do it right every time. It's easy to kind of get lazy in this drill and just, like I said, take it for granted because, you know, you're not outside or it's not a live fly ball, so it's not hit super high. But you want to be able to kind of work on some of the mechanics that we talked about. Always anticipate a runner tagging up. Get behind the ball if you can. And if you can't, then make the catch. Don't flash the glove too early. But really important to sprint. Always play at game speed as close as you can to game speed. Um, that's the other mistake I see. Players just kind of go through the motions in these drills and they're not playing game speed. Then all of a sudden the game starts, and it's really difficult to go from used to playing 50% to now all of a sudden I have to play 100%. If you play 100% all the time, you make the game easy. So that's that's really the goal. So 
uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Hopefully this helps you out. We're going to continue to put up a bunch of different drills um, for you guys. So uh, subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Share the video with all your friends. Give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. And that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck to you, and we'll talk to you later.